Greetings and welcome to the Leeward Islands District Devotionals. This week, we are coming to you from the St. Thomas St. John Circuit. Our theme this week is strengthen our sacred fellowship, expand our witness. My sub theme is a renewed interest for God and the things of God taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. I am Sister Myrna George, a local preacher on trial in the St. Thomas St. John Circuit. Please join me in our theme song, O Thou Who Camest From Above. Let us go to God in prayer. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thankful hearts that you have afforded us to see another day, another day, another day where we can praise you and worship you and thank you for all that you have done and continue to do for us. Father, bring clarity to my mind and my lips that I may speak. Thus saith the Lord, bless this worship this morning so that it may be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm reading from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, 
But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining to forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage of scripture begins with verse 12, which states, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal. What is Paul speaking about? What is it that he is saying he has not yet obtained? Well, in this chapter, Paul reminds us as to who he is. He was a Pharisee which were very devout men of God that followed the letter of the law to a tittle. He was circumcised on the eighth day as they did in Israel. He came from the tribe of Benjamin based on the law, but Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrews. So in terms of who Paul was and how he lived his life as a Benjaminite, a devout Hebrew, he would be considered faultless because of his self-righteousness. This all has to do with his credentials, his successes in life. Remember too that Paul, this same Paul, was also actually Saul being his Hebrew name. Saul was the man that hated the Christian faith and persecuted the Christians without mercy. He was intense in his persecution. After Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, Paul committed himself to wiping out the Christian church. It's all in the book of Acts. This is the same man that approved and witnessed the stoning to death of Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verses 49, 59 and 60. But one day, one day, God stopped him in his tracks on the road to Damascus. It was there Saul personally met Jesus Christ, and his life was not the same. He was transformed. If you look at Paul through the lens of his life, he was impressive. But then Paul says in verse 8, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ my Lord. Paul says here that now that I have come to know who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for me, now that I have taken off the old coat and put on the new, when I compare what I had to the greatness of knowing Christ, I count all of that as rubbish. I voluntarily let it go. I voluntarily give it all up for the sake of Christ. Christ transformed Saul. And verse 10 confirms to us that Paul realized that without, with all that he had, something was still missing. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death. Paul, this same man who persecuted the Christians, gave up everything, his family, his friendship, his status in the Jewish community, in order that he may embrace Christ and his resurrection power. Brothers and sisters, this is what Paul was lacking. This is what Paul was hoping to attain as he told us he cannot say 
that he had attained it as yet. But Paul is quick to remind us that though he has not achieved all this, he is pressing on, he is striving forward. Out of the love for the Father, Paul is pressing on because even as God is transforming him, Paul is embracing him. Paul is now motivated to reject his self-righteousness, reject the life he lived as Saul through his committed interest for God and the things of God. Paul pursues Christ. He is running after Christ. He realizes that no amount of law-keeping, no discipline or religious rituals could save him, could make him right with God. Paul knows that he is not perfect. He knows that he has not obtained all that awaits him. He knows he has not arrived at his destination with Christ, but he is pressing on to take hold of his goal. That's the only way we will make it, brothers and sisters. When we make mistakes, we must get up, sincerely ask forgiveness from God. We press the delete button on the sins that bogged us down, and we press on toward the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul, like all of us, we know we are not there yet, but we cannot let our past control our destiny. And our goal is to win the prize for which God has called us. Paul is telling us the road is not easy, but press, press on. Don't be burdened down by, by what took place in the past. You ask for forgiveness, and if you believe in God and his forgiving his forgiving grace, then press on to win the prize for which God has called you, for which God has called me, which is heavenward in Christ Jesus. Friends, there is so much we can learn from Paul as he was a man just like us. Because of Paul's Damascus Road encounter, Paul gave up his prestige and his religious status, and he became an intense mouthpiece for Christ, bridging the gap between the Jew and the Gentile. Paul worked tirelessly to convince the Jews that Gentiles were accepted by God, and to convince the Gentiles as well that they were accepted by God. Paul was personally transformed by God from a persecutor of Christians to a preacher for Christ to both the Jews and the Gentiles. The God that Paul served is a God of inclusivity and his name is Jesus Christ, the true and living God. Because of Paul's encounter with God, he can tell us today that no, I am not saying that I have arrived or I have attained all that God has for me. But I know that if I keep dwelling on my past rather than pressing delete, it will hold me down and stop me from achieving my goal. Paul's goal instead is to press on, straining with all his being toward what lies ahead. Today, Paul is recommending Jesus to us. This same Jesus that he met on the road to Damascus. Paul is asking us to consider Jesus. He is asking us to re-engage our lives in Christ. To have a renewed interest in God. For God and for the things of God. Brothers and sisters, Paul is not saying it's an easy road. We know that sometimes trying, trials come in life even to the Christian life. And this can be so difficult. It leaves us discouraged at times. 
we falter so often that we feel we can never please God. Friends, we will never be flawless. But what Paul is saying is that, what, that with God in the vessel, we will smile at these storms and keep pressing, keep pressing toward the prize, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ is able to sustain us. Paul was a man just like us. And with all our perseverance and steadfastness, we too can attain the prize, which is Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should be encouraged to get thirsty for God, get hungry to know more about Jesus, and to witness to others about God's saving grace. The songwriter says, more, more about Jesus let me learn, more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. We must press on for the prize, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then, and only then, would we be able to test and prove, approve what God's will is for us. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The songwriter says, each step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with his loving hand, he leads the way. And with each breath I whisper, I adore thee. Oh, what joy to walk with him each day. By following Paul's example, he even measures, he even reassures us that the more we desire God and the things of God, he will direct our paths. Paul says in verse 15, if we think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to us. Friends, let us continue to live up to what we have already attained. We press on now toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We pray as we go forward, we would be inspired to run after you, to hold fast to the prize of the heavenly calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Pressing on the upward way, new heights I gain in every day. Still praying as I upward bound, Lord, let my be on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on
now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>